Okay, welcome to this uh, virtual event by Watlington Environment Group of the Starling Memoration at Otmore RSPB Reserve. We had hoped to make it a real life event, but COVID put pay to that. So let's see how well we can do in a, in a virtual event. And p perhaps next year we'll have more, more luck to come here in person. A little bit about uh, Otmore RSPB Reserve in general terms. It's uh, an area of about 400 hectares and it's uh, low-lying land, uh, wet grassland, reed bed and I think something like nine or ten miles of hedgerow, mainly blackthorn, hawthorn and willow. Um, a, a range of habitats. We try as volunteers, I'm an RSPB volunteer on a work party, we try to keep the reserve varied. We don't want any one species to take over. We like to produce what we call a mosaic of habitats. Uh, to the north of the reserve, there's a stretch of the River Ray, into which and from which the RSPB have permission to, to, uh, to uh, dispose of and draw water in order to manage the wetlands. And the wetlands are fed by a crisscross of channels right across the reserve. The RSPB took over the reserve about 23 years ago and have managed it and improved it ever since. It changes all the time. It wasn't always like this, but far from it. It didn't look like this in previous uh, generations and it certainly didn't sound like this. During the Second World War, all this area was an artillery range. And even now today, when we go out as volunteers to try to put up fence posts in some parts of the reserve, we have to take metal detectors to detect unexploded ordnance. Um, during the Victorian era, it was cultivated. And the story goes, I'm not entirely sure whether it's true or not, but it's a good story, that um, uh, Lewis Carroll, um, who was standing up at Beckley at the top of the hill there, near the uh, television mast that you may be familiar with, looked down on Otmore during Victorian times and saw it laid out rather like a chessboard. And that's where he got his inspiration for the giant chess game in uh, Alice uh, Through the Looking Glass. But today it's very much an RSPB re reserve and um, it is, as I say, changing all the time. I've been coming here for 14 years and the wildlife increases year on year. Bird life, mammals, reptiles, we have grass snakes also and um, common lizard and a mass of different insects, including some pretty rare uh, butterflies. As well as the starlings, there are many other species that you could expect to see or hear um, at this time of year at Otmore. Um, at this time of day, as the sun sinks, uh, it's quite uh, possible to see barn owl and short-eared owl all over the reserve. Um, at any time of day during the autumn and winter, you'll see a lot of snipe, curlew, and huge flocks of plover, mainly lapwing, but also golden plover. Other species that you could see at this time of year are the thrushes, both the resident ones, mistle thrush and song thrush, and also fieldfare and redwing. Uh, amongst the, uh, the, the raptors, um, obviously there's the ubiquitous red kite, but buzzard are here. A few minutes ago I saw a marsh harrier, and we can get also a hen harrier, but I don't think they've been nesting here. Marsh harrier certainly, hen harrier just passing through. We get peregrine occasionally, lots of sparrowhawk, and in summer, uh, the hobby, which is very much a kind of a signature bird of the reserve. You can stand at this spot in April, May, June, and see up to 10 or 12 hobbies flying around, catching flies and catching young birds. Uh, we're at the first uh, lagoon, the first reed bed, by the first screen at Otmore, and this is more or less the most uh, favourite place for the starlings to gather. And what will happen is you'll get smaller groups, usually, coming together to form larger groups, and then eventually one or perhaps two huge flocks of starlings. And recent reports have said there have been up to 45,000 birds. And what will happen is they will gather and they will murmurate, which means that they will form these interesting and dramatic formations in the sky and making some wonderful sounds, which I always think sound rather like um, waves crashing on a shingle beach. They'll all gather together and they will fall 
almost literally fall eventually onto these reed beds where they will roost overnight and they do that for the sake of safety. Safety in numbers and safety because they're over water in that they're safe from land predators. How do they do it? Well we don't really know but uh, the, the, the general understanding these days is that every single bird has an awareness of seven of the birds in its vicinity. And if you do the maths, you can work out that pretty quickly you get a, an ability for a, a mass of birds to form uh, congregated formations, formations that have some kind of order and uh, discipline to them. So we're still learning all the time about starlings, but hopefully the conditions, as you can see, are more or less perfect and we're hoping for a good show tonight and when they do arrive we'll try to capture as much of it as possible on film so that you can enjoy it and whet your appetite for better days to come next year when we can come in person. So hopefully we'll have a good show of the starling murmuration uh, this evening but I really would recommend that you come along to Otmore at any time of year. It varies widely from it's one season to the next, but it's always worth coming here. It's a very uh, nationally important site. Um, it's very easy to get around. It's flat, it's easily accessible, and it has something for everyone. There aren't many facilities. It's a pretty simple place. There's a car park, there's no shop, there's no cafe, and depending on your view of bushes, there's no toilets. But it's um, very well worthwhile coming. And it's the kind of place which I certainly fell in love with 14 years ago when I first came. And I think you might do too.